This is part one of the Digital Watchdog 4K Vandal Ball Camera Review. Check the link in the description for part two that contains 4K video samples from this camera of both day and night recordings. I first saw this camera at the ISC West Security Convention and was impressed with the new line of cameras by Digital Watchdog. I thought I would get one and do a review. First off, we'll take a closer look at these cables. We've got an Ethernet cable. It does PoE, power over Ethernet, but if you don't have power over Ethernet, there's also an external power connector. We've got alarm cables right here, and then we've got audio out for connection to a speaker, and then we have audio in white cable for a microphone. Here's a list of the that's built into the camera. This camera happens to be the IVA, which only has these that's built in. This camera has a little door on the side that you use the Allen wrench to loosen these screws and pop the door off. Here's your SD card slot, the reset button, and your connection to your test cable. I haven't used this yet, but you can plug this test cable in here and then connect this external monitor cable. There are two set screws with this camera. First off, this set screw prevents it from rotating this way and this way. So you tighten that down that into place. There's also a set screw right here on the top. This other Allen wrench, and it prevents it from turning this direction right here, clockwise and counterclockwise, and so you tighten that down. And then you're locked into position. I like how the back of this camera is nice and sealed up tight. It has the MAC address and serial number there and some nice uh, spongy material here, soft, to help it against rough surfaces to be stable. This is all the equipment that comes in the box. We have the manual, the mounting template, and the hardware. We have the test cable. I really like these, I'll show you these. I really like these connectors if you're going to install this on a hung ceiling where you have a ceiling tile. You can make a small hole for the cable and then a small hole for these mounting brackets. Screw those in there. Put it through the ceiling tile. Get these little connectors, tighten them down, and you're set. This is a wall mount bracket that works for this Vandal Ball camera. And we'll go ahead and connect it. I just want to show you that it comes with this gasket, the mounting template, mounting hardware. Let's go ahead and connect this camera to this wall mount bracket. Very sturdy. If you're not using all these cables, there's a nice little pocket the cables in, and you can run your Ethernet cable out through your wall. Let's start a walkthrough of the new Digital Watchdog 4K Vandal Ball IP camera. This model happens to be. The DWC MVD8 
W I A T W. So let's take a look. We put the IP address of the camera in and we go directly to the camera. I saved my password so it automatically logged in. This is where we can set the zoom or the focus. This has a really nice autofocus feature. So if I set this to manual, I can manually focus it, but I can go ahead and change the focus. Then if I hit auto, it will go ahead and go back and do its own autofocus. And it does quite a good job when it locks in on the final focal point. To set up, we go ahead and click this setup. <clears throat> Here's the system information. We can give it a name if we'd like and a location if you have a lot of cameras. But this is the model name, the resolution. This is a 4K resolution right here. It can do 30 frames a second. Do firmware updates, set the date and time, user management, which is nice that you can add someone who is a viewer of this camera with a different username and password. We have logs, factory reset, we can reboot the camera. Lots of things here. System diagnostics can tell us a few things. And when you get all the settings correct, you can back it up. So let's go ahead and start at the top. The video, we can do H264 or H265. Change the description. You can lower the resolution if you need to. Lots of settings here. If you need to put on screen display, put some text on it saying front yard, front door, and you can add a timestamp right onto your video if you'd like. Region of interest is interesting. I think this helps with the analytics. It tells the camera where the most important things in this picture frame are. There's some audio settings and a privacy mask, which is nice in case there's a little section that you don't want to have recorded. You can create you a mask. Image adjustments are nice. If you'd like to turn up your saturation a long ways, And you can see that takes effect. We'll turn that back down. Back to where it was. Exposure settings. If it's too bright or too dark. Day and night. This is interesting because you can put it in day mode 24 seven. And if there's enough light, ambient light around, then you can have color all the time. Wide dynamic range and the black and white settings. There's white balance. Image enhancements. Flip or mirror if you're upside down or backwards. Network status. On VIF, plug and play, dynamic DNS, FTP if you need to send still images to an FTP server. If you need to email alerts to a specific email, you can put your SMTP in there, S and MP. Triggers and actions. Transfer images. For alarm systems, there are some connections on this for alarms. In the event rules, you can add an event, 
motion or network problems, bad logins, temperature. If it's temperature is getting crit critical, then you could set up an email and send that to someone. If you have motion, you can set a motion area somewhere. Someone's in that, and that can send an email. And you can configure alarms there. You can do local storage with an SD card, or you can do an NVR, a DVR. So here's an SD card. If you had an SD card, you could set that. So for the analytics, you would have the analytics turned on, and you could create a new rule. Line crossing, entering, exiting, loitering, counting. Lots of different analytics here. Counters, if you want to add a counter, you put a counter in here and it will help count people. I've not set that up yet, so I'm not sure how that works. Calibration. Classification, person, vehicle, clutter, group of people. Burnt in annotation, TCP notification, HTTP notification, tampering, object tracker, scene changes, and there's some license information. Some nice security features, IP address, filter configuration. RTSP authentication, 802.1x, web connections, certificates, if you have enterprise level certificate, and auto lock. That does it for part one. Check out the 4K sample recordings in part two. See the description for a link. Thanks for watching.